welcome to the Trail Manners Podcast, single track session number 111, number 111. Today we got a lot to cover, um, quite a bit going on in uh, running in our world and mm-hmm. around the world, I guess. So um, we hope you had an opportunity to listen to the podcast on Tuesday with uh, Gabe Joyce. Uh, it was a fun show talking to Gabe and his year of 2018, what he's done, plus what he's got going next year. All right. Um, and we also sat down at Roasted Coffee House, Roasters and whatever they are up there in Park City. Super good. Stoked. Stoked, roasted, and something. Stoked roasters. Yep. See, Joel remembers. I'm pulling up a picture just to right. remember that I took. They had some good offerings there. The coffee was good. Their uh, green goddess, the matcha. Matcha goddess. Was really good. Yep. Stoked. Roasters Coffee House. Yeah. That's what it was. So it's on Main Street in Park City. If you're up there, check them out. Yeah, we uh, we got there bright and early. Beat them to the beat them to the door. Right. Waited. Went in. Did the podcast. Talked to Gabe, and Gabe's sending us some coffee. It looks like. Yeah, I'm so excited for that. It'll be fun to give that a shot and give that a go. Um, yeah, we've got a lot going on. Um, I'm headed off to San Diego. Mm-hmm. As you are listening to this podcast, the day it launches on Thursday, the 25th, I will be either on an airplane. Right. Or chilling with Shamu, either way, hanging out with my daughter. I didn't think they were doing the Shamu thing anymore. They do some, like, orca thing, but I don't think it's, like, what it used to be. They still do something. Hmm. I think they're moving away from that. Yeah, I was looking at the schedule, and they definitely don't have as many shows. Right. Um, But we always have a good time. we got some cool rides that, fortunately, i got to, you know, make my daughter stand with someone that works at SeaWorld while dad rides a couple of the rides because <laughs> she, she won't ride the rides not the not the intense ones well, like what like spinners she doesn't like stuff that goes upside down oh okay and they have a new one that goes upside down gotcha and they also have another one that I'm really close to talking her into going on yeah it looks pretty cool so mm. but yeah dad's got to ride a couple of rides uh, but yeah just hanging out the ocean Chilling, eating, doing whatever. Uh, be a nice little R and R. It's like 80 degrees right now. Is it? Hmm. So I'm not. It's that's supposed not, to be warm here this weekend too. Yeah, it is. It's been beautiful here. Um, a little bit of rain, but I got caught in a rainstorm last night. Just yeah. went on a walk right over here, and it was right. nice. About halfway through my walk, as far as I could be, my turnaround point just down- downpoured. Yeah, <laughs> hiding under a tree, looking like a homeless <laughs> person squatting under a tree. Um, and for those that uh, have been asking, yes, I did go into jury duty. Hmm. Um, I made eighteen dollars and fifty cents, right? But they won't pay me for three weeks because you know it's got to be a process. Um, but I was a little disappointed because I got a lot of help on how to dress. So I, right. I, I dressed up. I got some khakis, some wing tips. You're looking good. I did. I had a button up. It, yeah. In fact, it, people made fun of me most of the day that saw me. They're like, "Holy cow!" Like they're not used to that. They're, um, they're thinking you're about to get your profile pics for Tinder. Probably. Right. Yeah. Fitness singles. Yeah. Um, and then I had an Ogden Trails Network meeting and just went that way, and everybody oh, was looking like, at me. Who like, the hell is this? Exactly how it was. Like, oh, mm-hmm. my gosh. I'm like, oh, it's so self-conscious now. That's why I don't wear pants. Um, but, yeah, I walked in, <laughs> and uh, I scanned the room. I walk in, go through the detector. I'm scanning the room. I'm like, okay, you got to find a jury buddy. Right? Right. You're going to be here all day. Let's check it out. Um, jury buddy. Uh, yeah, I was the only one that was kind of dressed up. Appropriately, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. There, there were people in shorts, and I was livid. I wanted to go tattletale. Yeah. The door, no shorts, no tank tops. Yeah. Um, walked by some individual that hopefully was just trying to get out of jury duty. Maybe I hadn't showered in like three weeks. Right. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to be at the other end of the room. They didn't actually seat you for jury duty, did they? No, like, we went into a yeah. room and sat. They gave us a paper. Right. And we sat down. You watched the videos. And they introduced what was going on for the day. And then we watched the videos of how important the job it is. And right. And how we need to take it seriously and, you know, all that stuff. And then they give you your juror number to where you sit when you go into the next room. Right. You have into to sit the box. in the assigned seating. Yeah. So we're sitting there. Um, and I'm good. At, I'm good at following rules. Right? right. I'm a pretty good rule follower. Yeah, you're a good little boy. I am. You know, I bend them a little bit. You right. know, but uh, you know, I'm stuff like you know, they tell me don't tell the cops. I don't tell the cops. Right. Someone says don't touch it. I don't touch it. Don't yeah. feed them after midnight. I don't feed them after no, midnight. No, definitely not. But uh, yeah, I wore pants. I, you know, I was respectable. But then my mind went to this, like, dude, you're gonna totally get selected. Like, because you look the part. Yeah, I look like you know. No, and I hate stereotyping. I get stereotyped all the time. But I mean, you could just. Like some people, it's just, I don't know. Like one person didn't park in the right spot and they made sure they called them out. They're right. like, you didn't listen to the whole recording. You're supposed to. And they just lectured them right in front of everybody. Right. Good. You know? they, maybe these people deserve it, right? Because oh, there's a certain level of self-respect for yourself. And then also you need to respect that institution. Yeah. 
and these people aren't. They yeah. weren't. Yeah, it was, it was I wonder if you guys sad. got if if you actually been seated if the judge were ripped into these people for looking like bums. I don't know. I, I hope so. But yeah, the <clears throat> so the judge comes in. So we're sitting there. It's like almost eleven o'clock. I got there at nine. Yeah. And we're just waiting. It took a little bit longer, I guess. So the job comes, you know, the judge was, you know, it's like they, they go through the next thing of, do you know these people? Are right. you familiar with this case? Yeah. Um, do you know the witnesses or whatever? Um, and, you know, I was waiting for the judge to come up and say this is, you know, about public nudity or streaking. Right. And I would have said, hey, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Because I'm out. Watch, I, watch this. Yeah, I'm like, Hold I, don't, my beer. I don't like to wear pants. In fact, yeah. I've got nothing underneath my pants, so yeah. I should probably get excused, but no. Um, yeah, she comes in. She says, okay, I apologize. This rarely happens. We don't like it to happen like this, but they just settled. Right. So they showed up for their court date. I still yeah. don't know what the case was, and they settled. And yeah. she's like, you know, it's a taxpayer's dollars, blah, blah, blah. But I got excused for the next two years Yeah. because I was actually there. Well, that's uh, good. One person didn't show up. Yeah. And it sounds like they were just going to go pick them up somewhere. <laughs> go arrest them. <laughs> that's what that lady sure. said. So yeah. it was pretty funny. But yeah, I didn't. I, I dressed up for nothing. Yeah. I drove, I did my hair, mm-hmm. and the rest of the day I just stayed in my clothes. Right. Thought I would just, you know, go to the mall, hang out. That was see a practice. What I could attract. Run. Yeah. It was yeah. a little practice. Yeah, yeah it was. I like it. Um, I cleaned up all right. So. Did my hair different, which was kind of funny. But hmm. my daughter was even like, she's like, what? Yeah, sorry. she's like, what, who are you? What, who? What? Huh? You know, I'm like, she's calling on. the cops to worry the same right? strangers in the apartment. Stranger danger. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was a little bit of good news. Other good news, I went in to uh, get my calf worked on, mm-hmm. and I got cleared to run. Yep. He's like, yeah, you probably just strained it. It wasn't right. bad because I'm pushing around doing this, but it's super tender though. So that makes uh, me nervous. I think you still have a little tear in there. Yeah. It makes yeah. me nervous. It's been almost two weeks. I haven't ran, so I'm like, now I'm upset. Right. So I'm like, man, I was working to build my fitness up, and now hey. that's going. So, but yeah, I got cleared, and I've been walking yeah. and doing some, some stuff, but it makes me nervous, man. I, I don't want to hurt it worse or be off it longer. So mm-hmm. I think what I'll do is wait till after I get back from San Diego. That's probably smart. Because you you'll know. do a bunch of walking down there. Oh, yeah. We're going to do a lot of walking. Yeah. Um, I also, for the listeners out there, I did accept the soccer coaching position. Oh yeah. I am now a head coach of the 06 Blitz FC soccer team. So they based in Farmington. Is that their home base? That's kind of the home base. I mean, yeah. there's kids from like Mountain Green all the way to like Is West the, Jordan. Whoa. Yeah. It's West a comp team. Jordan? Yeah. yeah. They're, it's, they're, they're pretty spread out. Dude, that's nuts. Yeah. Um, I last game. hear that. Last games this week. Parents, it's like a comp team. I mean, they, they travel. They do really well. It's a good little team. Yeah. Um, they it's do tryouts. Like There's West two. West Jordan. Yeah, they travel. It's a solid hour driving. Yeah, yeah, for training in Farmington. Great facilities. Um, but I'm pretty excited to get going. There's a lot of steam going. It's a uh-huh. newer club. Um, so, yeah, it'll be pretty cool. Well, if you got any of those little boys that are too skinny, you know where you can send them. Well, they've already talked about it. I guess I'll they did some, that last year. I'll put some meat on them. So this is what the assistant coach, my friend, he says, yeah, last year we sent them to this uh, some dad knows a guy at a CrossFit gym in Roy. Oh, okay, yeah. I, yeah, I can't, his last name's Gallegos or Gonzalez or something, yeah. Roy CrossFit or something. Sure. And he's like, yeah, we try to send them once a week in the wintertime right. um, to do that. So it might be something. Yeah. I'm like, hey, I got a buddy that trains uh, yeah. specifically. Yeah. And I, I can could put some muscle on. I could jump into the set. Some of the kids, I mean, some of them are so, but they're that age, right? They're like yeah. U12. And, oh, yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're doing shooting drills from 18 out, and it's like barely getting to the goal. Yeah, exactly. You know? And then right? some kids are putting it over. Oh, easy. So it's just that yeah. whole development age. I know. <laughs> but I'm excited. It's going to be something fun. Well, and, that'll be good for you. Yeah, that. I'm pretty excited about it. And then uh, Halloween's right around the corner. It is. It's creeping up. And just a uh, pro tip, best time of year to hand out your expiring gels mm. or nutrition's. <laughs> for kids that come to the door. Yes. Yeah. That's a great idea. I go I through my whole thing. Yeah, I go through my whole thing. If something's going to expire, goes in the bag. I like I it. love throwing kids like some goo rock tain. Oh, my gosh. Five-year-olds love that they stuff. They don't even know. You can sneak it in there. You can get a handful of, like, Tootsie Rolls and bury that sucker in the middle. Here you go, yep. kid. Yep. What's this waffle? Yeah, what's yeah, this? Go for it. You're going to like yeah, it. Yeah, the gels are good. A little run gum. Never hurt yeah. anybody. Oh, my gosh. So, uh, yes. Kids you love that stuff. Give it to them right then. Here, you got to chew this right now, yeah, right? Yeah. Look at the parent. I'm safe. Look at me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's just a great pro tip. Great time of year to get rid of expired nutrition stuff. Your gels are, are huge. Kids love that <laughs> stuff. It's like syrup for pancakes. <laughs> yes. And they love the goo rock tans. Yes. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> um, but And we also should throw out a congratulations to uh, Killian and Emily. 
the word is out on the street that uh, they will be having a child yes. in Bethlehem. In Bethlehem. <laughs> in a stable. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the next coming yeah. right, of this next, child. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so mm-hmm. me, and, me and Jill have already tapped. We're going to start a new ultra team. Yeah. It's going to include uh, Anna Frost's newborn yes. and Emily's newborn. Yeah. And we think they're going to be pretty special. Just those two, yeah, exactly. They're going to rule. <laughs> it's just going to be called the FKTs because mm-hmm. <laughs> they're going to be pretty sweet. Uh, so that's that's uh, that'll be fun. But um, yeah, there's a lot going on. So a couple of races we will cover because they're kind of big. One that just barely finished, <laughs> literally. Um, the big dog black yard ultra backyard yard big backyard uh, ultra. Yes. <laughs> um, holy cow! I mean, that come on, exciting. Courtney DeWalter, just going for it. So uh-huh. if, if you if you're not familiar with this, it's a race put on by Laz mm-hmm. um, Lazarus Lake, and it's like a 4.1 mile loop, right? right. And you have X amount of time, an hour, you have to fin- an hour. hour to finish it. Hour to finish that loop. And then you rest and go out for the next one. Yeah. So if you finish it in 45 minutes, you've got basically 15, 15 minutes to relax yeah. until the next loop starts. Yep. And I think that would be hard early on. Like run a mile and wait. Right. You know, because, you know, the average, you know, fast times, things like that, you know, the fastest ones are like 42, 41. Yeah, that's fast. So they're waiting 15, 20 minutes for the next loop. Yeah. I think that would be tougher. Um, but yeah, just finished up as we're recording this. And the winner walked away, Johan Steen mm-hmm. from Stockholm. Um, he finished 283.3 miles, which right. is 68 laps. Yeah. So he was the one that lasted the longest. So but, 68 uh, hours of continuous running, yeah, basically. Pretty much. And then, yeah, you don't you don't sleep like a 200-mile race. You no. don't get a 15, 20. I mean, yeah, I guess you could sleep for 10 minutes, right? I don't know if that would be beneficial. I don't not. know, man. That would be hard. Um, and it's, sad. It's, it's crazy when you look at the standings is because if you, you're either first place or you DNF'd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so true. You know what I mean? It's yes. like Courtney DeWalter DNF'd. DNF'd. After 67 laps or 279.1 miles, yeah. she DNF'd for second place. Man, I was hoping they were going to reach 300 miles. That would have been awesome. That would have been something else. Um, okay, 279 miles is that's pretty that's good. Special. You know, I think Johan at 283, he should have just went out and well, he had to finish. No, he had to finish that lap. No, I'm just saying he should have went out and finished 17 more miles, so he can oh, get 300. Gotcha. He's like, yeah. you know what? I'm close. I'll probably never do 300. Yeah. This is the time, right? Exactly. Uh, Gavin Woody, he hung in there with him, uh, 65 did. laps. So you had your top three: uh, Johan at 68, Courtney at 67, and Gavin at 65. Hmm. Um, and then it goes down from there. And so I'm, I'm curious. Because I didn't, I mean, it, they don't track every, usually it's like the front runners is the only ones you ever hear yeah. about. But if you go down the list, there were mm-hmm. 60, 68, no, there's, uh, it's the n- bib number. Um, anyway, the last place, let's do right. that. Um, one lap. Right? Somebody local, what was their age? Uh, 47. Hmm. Um, and the lap time was 57, 58 for the first lap. Wow. Maybe it was the bonds here after that. Maybe. And then, like, there was a two lapper. Yeah. From Great Britain. It's like, why did you come over from Great Britain and do two laps? Um, you don't know. The, yeah, know but that's the thing. You don't know the story, story but it's right? just interesting Maybe to see. Maybe help for the rest of the time. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty interesting, though, to, to see the, just the discrepancies there. So, right. I mean, we've talked about it on the show, but, you know, whatever the Ultra Runner of the Year award is, I hope the name's already laser engraved for the women. Yeah, you know right. I mean? It's like, don't waste your time uh, waiting. Exactly. Just engrave it. Doesn't matter what happens between now and the end of the year. I can't see anything. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. So who's who's runner up? Nobody. Really? I mean, because Camille's name's always in the hook, but yeah, she's but had she's a bad year. She's had a so-so year. Yeah. So it's like, who's next? Cat Bradley's had a decent yeah, year. Yep. I mean, there's some. There, don't get us wrong. Right. There's a lot of quality out there, but I mean, when you're comparing, oh, that, she's head and shoulders above everybody. Yeah. I mean, men and women. Yeah. She's that far ahead of everybody right now. And then if you even look at, uh, like, just bringing up her name, um, Camille, she's just announced she's running the TNF 50. Yeah. So. That'll be a good course for her, I think. There's some more. Uh, what do you but hopefully it? Courtney's done for the year. She shuts it down. She's just resting. I'd like to see them do some sort of physiological testing uh, during this Big's Backyard Ultra. I think they can get a lot of good data. Probably could. Um, 
you know, the, what happens at the breakdown of 100 miles, 200 miles, 250 miles. Then get a lot of uh, measurements off of that. Yeah. And then psychologically too. Oh, psychologically be tough. Oh, especially after that. That so those top three are running. That third place person drops out. You're like, oh man, now it's down between you and me. Yep. Yep. Wow. I'd like to hear what's going on in their mind at that point. Yeah, because I'd be. Uh, why? Why did she stop? Did she time out, or did she say, "I'm done"? Yeah, I like, need a nap. Yeah, I'm tired. I don't need this right now. I need some cheese curds. Yeah. Because <laughs> I imagine that's just uh, again. It's but we got. I don't know. She just does well at all these different types of events. Yeah, two hundred mile well races, these type the of spectrum. races. Yeah, I mean she's just rounded at mm-hmm. all of them, right? Yeah, it's like some you see are great mountain runners, some mm-hmm. are flat runners. She just kind of yeah. shows up and. Throw a course out. I'll I take it. I think you it. can attribute it to the basketball shorts. It's got to be. It's yeah. not. It's not tight. Right. Right. So it's it's a little looser. Yeah. Yeah. That's got to be. I'm gonna have to buy some online today. <laughs> there you go. Go to East Bay. Yeah. Grab some knockoffs. Um. Yeah. So that's that's pretty cool. So you have to check that out. It's a fun. Laz does some cool stuff, man. That's just all there is to it. Yeah. He's crushing it on just that creativity. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I'm hoping that he gives her an entry automatically if she wants into Barkley. That'd be awesome, right? That would be awesome. And again, it's a different thing, like wayfinding, right? Yeah, that'll be interesting. Because I think physically she's tough enough, mentally she's tough enough. Oh yeah, it's just that navigation. Yeah. But I mean, she's tough enough. She can hang out with those front runners. Yeah. Oh, she just ride their coattails for, for the them. first four laps. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She right? just wait for them mm-hmm. <laughs> at each turn or something. Yeah, for sure. Um, also, we uh, have the the results in from the Moab 240. Mm. Um, and that's just, you know, real quick. I mean, the winner was from Poland. Um, yep. It was like Peter. Yeah, right. Peter I from Polish. Pe- I think it was really close to Peter. P-I-O-T-R. Yeah. Piotry. It's, like P- it's really Petri close dish. to Peter, yeah. Yeah, he finished in 6014, mm-hmm. um, which is insane. 60 hours for a 240-mile race, essentially. Right. That's fast running. That's crazy. Um, so he, he was the winner there. Friend Phil Lowry, he finished in six or 81-18. So he came off an injury from the last one. But, uh, yeah, a lot of... What do you call them? Triple crowners. Yeah, I think going that's off with that. Amazing. Yeah, it's uh, not too far apart. No. Um, for the triple crown, and that's pretty insane, realistically. I don't, I don't get it. Um, what else we got going on? Uh, well, coming up this weekend, we got the Javelina Hundred, <laughs> right? Yeah. The Javelina Hundreds mm-hmm. coming up this week, which that's is always a big one that everybody looks forward to. It looks fun. Um, some characters, Chris Mako's running it, so you know that's going to be funny. Yeah, um, he's he's in it, so you know that'll be good. Uh, Darcy is in it. Darcy PQ from uh, Colorado, she's in right. it. Um, that always looks like a fun race. It's a Ultra Trail World Tour race mm-hmm. put on by Air Viper down there with Jamil and those guys coming up this weekend. You'll see pictures all over the web with this one. A lot of people down there, and uh, costumes are encouraged, so you know that's going to be kind of entertaining to, to see that oh what else we got going on uh as of today we're launching this they're talking about this show is tuesday studio 78 is on its way to the doctor so studio 78 is going into the garage to get checked up and uh get fixed get working just in time for winter you know because that's the easiest thing to do in the winter time but uh yeah. <laughs> but now my struggle is i need to find somewhere to park it for the winter right i got nowhere to park studio 78 so it's i find a place to park it mm-hmm or I gotta sell it. I I don't know, man. I think you should sell it. I want. I was thinking about. It, I'm like, I should park it. If I decide to sell it, you should do it in the spring, because that's yeah. when people are wanting. Like, no one's gonna buy a bus in the winter. Their mind's yeah, not there. Yeah, they might. I'm mean, selling it's a my kayak. Christmas present to somebody. Yeah, I'm selling my kayak, and I've got a hit on it. Yeah. You know, so it's like in the spring that would sell. Right. But in the winter time, no one's looking to go kayaking. I, I will. I'll go today. Maybe somebody down in Arizona will buy it. Yeah. I don't know. So uh, yeah, looking for a, a sleepy place for that. But excited to have that. Uh, up and running at least. Yeah, it'll, it should it shouldn't be a big deal. I already got my guy on it. Just got to get that towed in to get taken care of. Um, we also have a few things. We've got to cover a few races. We got the uh, Ogden Trail Running Festival coming up in May. Uh, registration's open, but we also have the Nordic 7K that's open. Right. People are registering for that. Yeah. Um, we'd love to see you out there. I know we're going to keep plugging that because that's mm-hmm. our race. And it's going to be a lot of fun, and it's right around the corner, really. I mean, you've got a little over a month. It's about six weeks. Yeah, a little over a month to train for a 7K. And uh, it's not just a 7K, folks. Some people look at that and go, that's too short. That's right. this. But it's a good course. It's it's challenging. you got a yeah. lot of climbing right out of the gate. Oh, yeah. 
We, we, don't, don't, we don't look at it as like, oh, this is come test your metal. It's like, right. no, come have fun. Yeah, that's what it's about. Right? Mm-hmm. Come enjoy spending time on the mountain mm-hmm. with some good people. Right. And even us. I mean, we'll even be there for the, for the heck of it. So um, that's November – or excuse no. me. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's December 15th, right. Saturday. Nordic Valley Ski Resort here. Right outside Ogden, Utah. Um, we also have a contest we're launching today for our good friends at the Beaverhead Endurance Runs. Mm-hmm. Man, super excited about this. I love this race. Ran it last year. Finished the 55K. Mm-hmm. Both the 100K and 55K are UTMB qualifiers. And the 100K is a Western States qualifier. Right. And it is tough. So just know that in advance. Um, registration opens November 1st, and we are going to give away a free entry right now to either distance. All you have to do is we're going to run it for two weeks from today, which is October 25th, okay? Mm-hmm. And all you have to do on the Facebook post of this episode, okay? Episode 111. Single track 111 on Facebook. Mm-hmm. You need to tag a friend, okay. right? Under that. All you got to do is tag your friend, mm-hmm. right? And you, you can share it if you want, but whoever gets the most likes on their tagging friends, so that kind of puts you in line, right? If you if your post gets the most likes, you're going to win. So tell your friends, hey, go over to this Facebook post, <laughs> like this, boom. I'm going to get a free entry to one of the coolest races around. Um, super fun, great location. Um, and if you're interested in doing it, because mm-hmm. registration's not open yet, go ahead and get your, what do you call it, um, Hotel now before they sell out because yeah. they do in that area. Stagecoach Inn has rooms available. Right. That's kind of the hub. That's where the shuttles pick you up. Right. 100K finishers get a sweet custom hoodie. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a great race. They do it first class. We will keep saying that because they do, and we really support everything they're doing up there. Good people, good folks um, doing that. And real quick, that lottery's going on, right? And nobody's won yet. The big, like, $2 billion, the gazillion. Oh, gosh, yeah. Still going, right? Yeah. If it, if it, So we're doing the show here on Tuesday. If nobody draws tonight, I might have to drive over to Wyoming, throw my hat in the ring, get myself a lottery ticket. And I'm just throwing this out there, people. If you are one of the lucky winners, um, pretty unique is we have a donate page <laughs> button on our page, Trail Manor. So <laughs> That's you're, you're going to get a lot of money, right? right? And you're not going to have time to spend it all. Be, chari- really. be charitable. <laughs> Give it to good charities. Give it to a good cause. Maybe right. get yourself, you know, a box of gels or two. But don't forget about Trail Manners. Yeah. Right? There's a little donate button. You know, just an avenue. We're just trying to help you get rid of it. Right. Help you offload it because you don't want everybody coming to you. Mm. People coming, breaking into your house. Right. Whatever. So. I think if I won, I'd probably move to Jackson right away. You would? I think so, yeah. Wow. I'd move to Jackson pretty quick. I would just buy a place in Bellingham. Oh, yeah, that'd be a good place to have. Yeah, and I'd have I'd both. Buy a, I could buy a duplex up there. Yeah. That way, you know, you have a place to stay, but then also you got some income coming in. Yep, right. Yeah. The VRBO it while you're yeah. not there. I mean, you don't really need the income. Yeah, I was gonna say. Just, <laughs> how about you, the person that lives there is the caretaker for there the property. Go. That's you how go. you got to do it. I mean, just there's a room off limits. That's your room when you visit. No, okay, so okay, let's back this up. So you're going to buy a place. It's going to be pretty sweet in Bellingham, yeah. right? And then you have like a caretaker's house. Yeah, because I'm going to need to bring my friends, so I'm right? going to need a whole place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like that. That's a good idea. need a barbecue. Yeah, I'm and then need... you get a place down in San Diego. Oh, Same for sure. Thing, right? Yep. So mm-hmm. I would do that, and right. I'd invite a lot of the listeners. Uh, yeah. You know, I'd be like, hey, we're having a trail manners get together in San Diego. Right, there you go. Free place to stay for mm-hmm. the first 50 people because it's going to be, you that's know, a, that's a big place to Well, I'm we're going to have sure a backyard. Want, we're going to have some like tents. Gotcha. We're going to have some tents. It's not going to be a big house. I don't want anything big. Yeah, but it's going to have some tents. Right. Uh, outdoor ice chest. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun. Place to, you know, wash your wash off outside so you don't have to come in the house after your run. We've got one of those showers that you can install out there. A yeah. couple of them probably. Yeah, you you make it easy. Place, right? Oh, you know what would be fun is why you're thinking about it, just get some property behind it and put a course together. Okay, I'm liking where this is going. All right, so this is what, you know, if me and Joel, this is what we'll do. So if someone wants to do that for us, mm. you know where the donate button is. Right. And we'll even name the place after you. Yeah. Yep, the, 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 the state. The, the Grant Nicholas. Um, guest Ranch. Yeah, Guest Ranch. I yep. like it. Yep, so. Yeah. Or, or the Gabe Joyce. Um, uh, hacienda. Oh, I like that. Mm-hmm. Yep. So whoever you are, don't forget about us because um, we'll, we'll we'll help you out. That's all we're here for to stay hope. All right. So let's uh, cover a quick little thing here. The Strava. Strava week, we had a sweep. Uh, Christian Morgan from England, I believe. Let me double check. Mm-hmm. Uh, run was 128.8 miles. Mm-hmm. Run time, 35.22 
and yes, uh, from London, UK, this fella. And he also climbed 25,095 feet. That's a lot of stairs. And we got a shout out to Erin Hill, number two, and climbing 22,932. Wow. So she's still training hard for hard rock. Mm-hmm. Um, so keep keep uh, that vert going, folks. But that's uh, that's our week. This week's Woody Footy was extremely difficult for me. There was a lot of really good ones. There was a lot of really... And you know what? There's some new names I haven't seen before, Mm -hmm. for sure. Um, But there are a lot of good ones from all over again. We had some from Jerusalem. We had Mm -hmm. from Germany. Germany. Mm -hmm. Um, Someone was on the Javelina Jundred course. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, Corner Canyon. I mean, they're all over the place. Um, And I'm going to give a little little nod here, just a little, little FYI. We appreciate... We very much appreciate Brett Whitelaw's commitment and energy, <laughs> but McDonald's is not going to do it for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. We love the comments. Right. We love the photos. Doing it in jeans. Yeah. I mean, that's like Joel says, no rattlesnakes. I'm yeah. not a pants guy. Yeah, no pantalones. No pantalones, but uh, Jimmy Thrash from DuPont Forest. Not sure where DuPont Forest is, but I know it's a place I want to go now. Yeah, is that... North Carolina or Pennsylvania, somewhere in there. Uh, Krista Alderdice from Vermont has one with, I love these, okay? It's like the, it's like a barn over a bridge. Yeah. Right? From like yeah, Sleepy Hollow. Yeah. yeah. That's what reminds me of the Headless mm-hmm. Horseman. Like I couldn't run yeah. there at night, no matter how familiar oh, I was no. with it. doesn't it. matter if they got lights in there or not. No. There's no way. Aaron Heather, Canmore, Alberta. Stunning. Stunning. Uh, Aaron Hill had a really good one at Snow Basin. That you really, know what would make that better? Is she had like a Dyson vacuum. Up there, you know. Oh, yeah, just clearing the trails. Just clearing the trails. Yeah. But, but it has to make sure it has to be a Dyson. I'm taking yeah. some leaves home, which yeah. I don't think Eric from Ogden has bought a vacuum yet. Yeah. Um, but if you, uh, well, I wasn't going to spill the beans, but if you look around, the floor is pretty clean. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, what was another one I really liked? Uh, Wesley Ross, Bryce Canyon, because it looks like it had some snow in it. Yeah. And with that red rock and the orange. It's good contrast. Uh, just awesome. But this week's winner... I think me and Joel kind of both decided on this, even though it was my week. It was yeah. kind of what we call it unanimous. Goes to our good friend and future superstar, yeah, um, Adam Wolf. Yes. Um, he posted a picture here. He was wearing his Trail Manners hat. Yes. A Bear 100 shirt. Mm-hmm. And he was in Vernal going on the Red Fleet Dinosaur Trackway. Did you see they flew over there? Yeah, they flew. I think like uh, legitimately flew over yeah, there. Yeah, they have a plane. Either yeah. have a plane or he, uh, he the dad, or Corey's a pilot. Like yeah. Yeah. Because they fly all over, it looks yeah. like. Um, but there's a um, – and they were listening to the Trail Manners podcast. Right. So it's like the trifecta. I know. Right? Woody footy picture. You got the hat on mm-hmm. and you're listening to the podcast. Mm-hmm. So – and there was a really cool follow-up photo of him flying the plane, <laughs> <laughs> which is solid. So congratulations to friend of the show, Adam Wolf, which we've had the pleasure of meeting. Yeah, he's and a good kid. Just a good kid. Um, so congratulations. We'll get your Woody Footy hat out to you. Just message me, manners at trailmanners.com with your address, and we will get that right over to you. And Randy? Um, Keep trying. Well, Brett is the one that posted it, but, you know, Randy posted, to avoid any tough decisions for trail matters, I won't even post my epic pick that yeah, he took. Cause, that. <laughs> cause so, so Brett's, which is funny, I love it. He says he went to every McDonald's in the area in yeah. blue jeans, which right. was 20.23 20. miles oh, on gosh. his birthday. And it's he says, porn, and he said, Corey seriously, Reese. what does it take to win a hat these days? <laughs> so, um, not the golden arches. No, that's not going to, that's not going to do it, but not. it's awesome. Such a fun photo. Thank we you so much for admire posting your that. Commitment, but What's yeah. that? We admire his commitment. Absolutely. I think it was really cool, but right. yeah, it's just not, not, uh, what we were looking at right there. Let's better hurry up. We're down to like 10, almost nine no hats. Yeah. Now. We only have a few left. So right. you, you got to bring the, these next up until now, between now and Christmas, you're mm-hmm. going to have to bring it. Yeah. Right. If you mm-hmm. want a hat and. Then they're gone, folks. They're We're not gone making forever and that ever. hat ever again. So when you see people with that hat mm-hmm. and you've got one, you kind of give them that. You got that nod, You're that look, club. like "What up?" Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's there's not many of those. So congratulations to Adam. Great job. Keep it up, buddy. You're awesome, and we hope to see you at some future races as well. All right. So we do have. Um, before we get into ask trail manners, what have, have we missed? Something? What have we missed? Know, How's your knee feeling? You've been getting out a little bit before no, surgery. No, I haven't. You haven't? Uh, no, I've been just resting it. Resting it. So you got like a little over a week, right? Yeah. It's like the yeah. So about a little over a week. Um, a little more than that, yeah. Are you gonna be eating ice cream to kind of heal? Dude, I've been 
pre pre eventing it hard with ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> ice cream loading yes i have been <laughs> that's awesome yeah. um yeah i'm looking forward to getting you back out on the trails I'm just anxious to get it over with cause yeah i'm just sitting around doing nothing now just healing right yeah oh the other thing i want to talk about was we th- we threw out last week that we have a few tickets to the trail running festival oh, uh, by anything? the rain shadow running haven't heard anybody i know amy pet great listener of the show she's got a ticket for ogden and salt lake to give away right i've got two tickets to each show yeah I'm going so just looking for someone to hang with, maybe right. you know have something pregame, hang out during the show. Right. I'm not the type of person that goes to places by myself, mm-hmm. which I'm not saying is a bad thing, folks. I just uh, got a lot of mental blocks there. Right. Um, but I got tickets to each show, so if you if you're looking for a ticket, you want to hang out, either you want Amy Pet's ticket, you don't want to hang out with me. I get it. No hard feelings. Or if you do, let me know. Um, got some tickets and love to love to go. I think those dates. Salt Lake is November 13th. Ogden is uh, November 12th. So they're back to back nights. So, all right, let's move on. We got a couple really good. I love our listeners, man. They're getting very. I like I like their questions. It's not creative. They're just solid questions. Like gotcha. I, I read these questions. I'm like, how many other people want to know this answer? Gotcha. And I know there's more. So our first one we're going to tackle is from Lisa from Athens, Georgia. Lisa says, I was running alone on the trails this past weekend when I came up on someone who had headphones in. Mm -hmm. I tried to make noise, and I slowed down to a walk since they were not moving over. They suddenly turned around and let out a scream (sighs) and then proceeded to get upset with me for scaring them. Oh. I let them know I made a lot of noise and even started to talk to get their attention. Right. Is there something else I should have done to avoid this angry trail user and conflict? (laughs) Well, unfortunately, I had that same experience about three weeks ago. Right. And there's really nothing else you can do. Right. I mean, I was kicking rocks, making noise, everything I could. Yeah. And I was trying to do it far enough in advance so it wouldn't look like I was about to jump on their back. Right. And I I started walking pretty far because I'm like, okay, I could tell they had headphones in. Yeah. Um, And I don't know. Sometimes I look at it this way. If they're an older person, I make a lot of noise. Oh, yeah. You know, but if they're younger, I still make a lot of noise, but I don't want to spook them. Right. And this will happen to be a female. Yeah. And so it made me more nervous. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm like, hey, I've been bear sprayed this year. I do not (laughs) want to get pepper sprayed, tased. Right. She's got a rattlesnake in her pocket. Something, right? So I was was the same thing. Making noise. Didn't work. I kept making noise. Really? Didn't work. She finally, and she screamed and jumped to the side. side. Ah. And I, I looked at her and I said, I am so sorry. I mean, I was like super apologetic. Right. And she's like, oh, I should probably not be wearing both of these. And I yeah. said, yeah. I said, you know, yeah. this is a busy trail with a lot of bikes. You might want to leave one hanging out. And I said it nicely. She was great. Don't yeah. get me wrong. But as far as yours is concerned, there's really nothing more you can do. Um, or so Joel's got, here, I got, got a horn. All right. So when that once you realize that's not going to work, like you're up on them, um, you're asking them, um, you're kicking rocks, back off like like a ways. And then what you need to do is you might need to get a handful of gravel, and then you start jogging again. But jog to the side so that you're in their periphery, and then you toss that gravel at them. So maybe you get caught in their periphery vision because you're off to the sides, yeah. right? And then maybe they'll feel the gravel. I mean, don't peg them with it. I probably would hit them with a rock. Yeah. I'd chuck it up on the hillside so they kind of turn their head. Yeah, something like that. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, well, they, they'd have to, like, see it, right? Because they, they're not going to hear it. Yeah. I think that's the best thing to do. Uh, but, I think the the last thing you want to do is tap them on the shoulder. Oh, yeah, yeah. I would never touch anybody on the yeah. trail unless I had my taser. I'd taser them. Right. I'd just but shoot But I've done that thing. before. Well, I've, I've tried to get off to the side so they can catch me out of their periphery. Well, I know the one spot when I had this happen last week, there was no side. It was yeah. like super single track, kind of as you're heading back to right. 22nd before you drop down that little up and hill, a lot yeah, of rocks. Yeah, that's tough. Well, even then there's like little curves and you're trying to like, you know, trying to get into the curve where they can see you, right? Mm-hmm. And I always start with stuff like when I was talking to this person that didn't get over, I'm like, hello, good morning. Yeah, something How like are that. You? Always. Like super friendly. Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh, they're not saying. I get. I was by myself. They were by themselves. I'm like, right. hey, it's uncomfortable. You know, I didn't have my yeah. my taser. I was going to shoot it at the ones with the coils that shoot. <laughs> yeah. And that would get them out of the that way. That would, You right? know, hit them. And sorry about that. Yeah. I had it on low setting. <laughs> <laughs> this is around the ground doing the fish flop. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think that's it is it is an uncomfortable situation because yeah. it happened it happens to everybody. Right. But uh, I think at the end of the day, just politely, like I yeah. did with this girl, I'm like you know you may not want to put two in. Yeah. Because you know you can't hear because let's I, you could tell 
most of them now, those nicer ones, are noise canceling they headphones, are. right? Can't hear jack. And they were buds. They were like Bluetooth, yeah. just loop in the back, kind of like the Jaybird. I don't know if uh-huh. they were the Jaybird, but I mean, they're noise canceling, yeah. really. So I mean, you shouldn't be wearing two noise canceling headphones on trails, in Why my not? opinion. No. And especially where we run, where it's so. I mean, when I run, I have one headphone, just yeah, for safety reasons. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, that's a great question, Lisa. Um, if anybody else has some other ideas, we'd love to hear them just and because I think a lot of us run across it. Maybe that's you can your list for the Ogden Trails Network because I know that they're looking for suggestions. Yeah. I think that would be good to have on the, the signage, you know, of, like, etiquette. Yeah, I think that's actually a great idea. I'm going you know, to type that in right one now. one of the top ones because it's – in the last, what, 10 years, it's become more popular to listen to music on the trails. And now that they've got those noise-canceling ones, that should be at the top. Just one year, bud. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's a safety issue. And like Joel mentioned, so I've, I'm on the Ogden Trails Network. We had our meeting last week, which did not go well, and I won't get into why, but no. I'm still upset about it. It's been a week. Yes. Um, but one of the things I've been tasked with is to help come up with scenarios mm-hmm. to do videos and PSAs for right. people on the trail. like. Obvious, obvious things, you know, clean up your dog poop, Yeah. what to do if a bike's here and a runner's here or a right. walker's here, you know, just etiquette type stuff. So mm-hmm. if, if anybody out there has some that they deal with, I'd love to hear them because we're just trying to educate more people here in the area because we right. have such a busy trail system. Yes. And, I mean, you look at it and say, you know what, it's it's people like to be out on the trails, but they just – some people – to their defense, don't know all the rules. Or right? they just don't care. Or they don't care. Right. So it's just something I've been tasked with. But the headphones one's a great one that no one's hit me up with yet. I that, think that that's will a go good on one. There. I've been thinking about that. So to get off topic here of our Ask Trail Manners. So you, well, you're asking Trail Manners. Well, you, you <laughs> posted that question in a different Facebook group the other day, and it kind of got heated. And so I've been thinking about it since then. And since then, we've also gone for a walk on the trail with our dog. And the trailhead we went to... There's so much poop at that trailhead that it's unpleasant. Was it 29th? No, it's oh, the boss, the boss, the, oh. the gate. Okay. We, we start there because okay. it's flat, yeah. right? Um, that should be number one Yeah. Um, right now. Uh, t- I think without a doubt. And then two, I think, you know, getting um, signs at the trailhead in Spanish and then Chinese uh, or Mandarin would be good too. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the mountain bikers, uh, we almost got pushed into Strong's Canyon the other day. Mountain biker came around that so fast, and the only way you can go is either uphill or downhill, and downhill yeah. in the Strong's Canyon. Um, I think that that's really important right now. That's I'm not saying it's getting out of control, but you can't ride on the BST fast anymore. No, you it, can't. It, it's too dangerous there's too many people there is and there's a lot of other trails i know mm-hmm. it's super convenient and some people yeah. commute that way i right. we've seen that for for work and right, stuff because it's convenient but it's just and that's that's the hard part we're faced with ogden trails network is you're trying to come across as saying hey do this right it's yeah. like be respectful yeah. like we post something clean up your dog poop and then someone posts horse people don't clean up their horse poop no. and it's like no, hey no, this no, is no. not what we're no. talking about we're just saying can you kindly do this right. you know it's not we're not trying to split hairs yeah um, and it, that's a different topic. Yeah. And even on this section where I'm talking about the BST, horses aren't allowed anyway, no. so it's not an issue there. It's not an issue. Right? That's so, we're talking about the BST. Yeah. So um, I think that's the problem is right. people that are just so like arguments. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, hey, good trail users, we had this problem. Don't use spray paint on the trail to mark your course. Right. People are commenting back, oh, well, why is this done this way? Why is it? It's right. like, no, we're just talking about this. There's so right. many topics, right? right? And so it's a, it's a good thing. We're just trying to educate yeah. the community. Mm-hmm. Um, Ogden City's on board. They're the ones actually going to do the video through the marketing department. Right. So that will be posted but, on their Facebook page. So more people hopefully it'll, can it'll watch. It will be good that people will, will see that. But I think that one of the things that's going to have to happen is you're going to have to – at all the trailheads, you're going to have to get new signage. Yeah. Um, and I, I know Ogden Trails Network can afford it. Yeah, we um, can. It's just finding the right signage. Yeah, it's finding – it's being uniform and agreeing on it. And it will take probably three or four years because that's just how that process works. But I think that's where you guys are at. And then also there needs to be a sign up at that Ross trailhead. Yeah. I know it's not an official trailhead, but so many people use it. Well, I know like just within the last week, the Forest Service was there, and they've put sticks up or that illegal trail from, from what is it, uh, Buse to Strong's or whatever it is. You know how you can go, not Buse, but mm-hmm. Hidden? You know that trail someone oh, yeah, built? Yeah, yep. Mm-hmm. So the Forest Service went up there and put things in the ground and said, this is not a trail. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh-oh. And people are mad about it. 
you know. But yeah. the Forest Service, like, listen, it's super liability purposes for us. We have right. to put that there. Yeah. We have no choice. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of it. So, and I'm also curious if anybody out there is part of a trails group, like a, you know, a, com- a different like community, community, whether it's a city, mm-hmm. whether it's, but not like trail runners, which isn't a bad thing, but how do you run things for your city, for your county, for your right. trail system? What are some things that work? Cause we're trying to kind of do that, be more, right. It, we're not reinventing the wheel. Someone has no. done something, yeah. right. But we're just looking for, for, uh, ways that way. So yeah, that's, that's a great topic, especially with a group that listens to this show. It's just, we're trying to make things safer, mm-hmm. funner. And sustainable. Right. Right. And that's what we all want in the long run. All right. We got one more Ask Trail Manners question. This comes from Marty mm-hmm. in River Falls, Wisconsin. All right. So we've got a Georgia and a Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. So here's what I like. See, Marty's is a good one, man. Just okay. like Lisa's. Thank you, Lisa. Marty says, I'm looking to hire a coach for 2019 and set some big goals for races. Whoa. I am looking to PR the 50K distance. Right on. What advice... Do you have for finding a coach? Mm. It's this part. Sorry, it cracks me up because I've had this conversation. It seems everyone that has ever ran is now coaching. Nah. But I want someone who is not just a good runner but understands running. Right. Most coaches' sites list their race resume, which is great. Yeah. But does that make them a good coach? Right. Just trying to figure out what what to look for. Thanks, fellas. P.S. Yeah. Whatever coach I can, whatever coach i get better have a taper up plan in, pl- in place or i know they're not <laughs> legit <laughs> that's a great question because we actually talk about this yeah and we have a lot of conversations about this and so we know I'll, I'll, we some, know some coaches personally we do yeah, and we can make recommendations and i i know what you're saying marty there are so many coaches out there yeah and and fortunate for us we know some what we would consider very qualified coaches yes right and i have seen some and i will never knock a coach but it's some people you know it's they're making money, right? Mm-hmm. But it's like working out with Joel. I couldn't go to another gym for the simple fact of I don't know if they have my best interest. Right? Oh, yeah. I know what you mean. Um, yeah. So when you do find a coach, I, I see what you're saying, and I know there are certifications that coaches can get, like through different organizations. Not that many ultra coaches have those certifications. But that's what I was going to say. But at you the ultra I mean? distance, I think it's pretty fresh. Yeah, I mean, you can get that CTS certification, I guess. Uh, USA Track and Field has a certification, but... Uh, it really doesn't apply to the ultra world. Mm-hmm. I think we've talked about it. We've had coaches on the show. And the great thing, some of the, like we'll bring up Ty Draney for right. a perfect example. Great guy. We love Ty. Mm-hmm. He's been on the show and said, I'm not for everybody. No. He's like, I like to have a phone interview, yes. discuss their goals, yeah. what I think, to see if it's a fit. Mm-hmm. And I think that's important. Like, I think any potential coach would want to have that phone interview with you. Yeah. I, I know Ty would do it. Um, Jeff Browning. Jeff Browning would do it. David Roach would do it. Yeah. So those are three right there off the top of my head that I would recommend. Yeah. Because I, I know what you're saying. I mean, it's difficult yeah. to go in and just because someone's finished 100 doesn't mean they can coach you at 100. They can give you yeah. tips and pointers. Don't get me wrong. I think everybody right. has an opinion. But if you're yeah. paying for services and you are looking for some structure, mm-hmm. um, you know, maybe it goes as much as finding out who they're coaching. And see oh, how, yeah, they're, sure. how they're doing. Like, yeah, and how I do you think like a lot of those with coaches so-and-so? will will give you recommendations or references. Yeah, it's like who are you coaching? How yeah. are they doing? Stuff mm-hmm. like that. But I think the biggest thing is, you know, maybe if you have some in mind, maybe just call all of them. Oh yeah, you know, sure. email all of them. If there's mm-hmm. six of them, you know, it's right. like it's your money. It's mm-hmm. your it's you're looking for a service like buying a car. You right. want to test drive it. You want to do your yeah. research on it. It's the same thing with getting a coach. Don't mm-hmm. just get a coach because they're the cheapest or the right. or or they coach or the most expensive. Yeah, too. yeah, you know, exactly. There's such a big difference in pricing structures. It really is. I've noticed yeah. that on a few. I went, oh holy cow, you wow. Which I'm not saying is bad. Don't get me wrong. Right. But it, it has to be comfortable for you and them. Right. Them understanding, it's maybe it's one of those things, hey, I can only train three days a week, and that mm-hmm. coach is like, well, I don't know if I can help you, right? Right. And I don't know if we can achieve these goals, and yeah. to be honest, another coach might say, oh, we can totally kill it at three days a week. Right. You know what I mean? So I think you just really have to feel comfortable with them, knowing that that person, and then what they offer. You know, do right. they offer where I can get a hold of them once, twice a week, unlimited? Right. They'll, they'll have you know? those uh, tiered plans. Yeah. So Most I, of them will. So I think that's probably it. Just interview them. Who are you comfortable with? Don't. Right. Don't look at necessarily their race resume. Just who are you comfortable with? Right. Maybe find out who they're coaching. I think some of the race resume is important, though, because you want to make sure that they have done that 50K distance or that 50-mile distance enough that they fully understand it. Yeah. Well, and it's never bad as well to – 
I don't know what your f- PR for your 50K distance is, but I know, you know, if I was <clears throat> looking for a coach for the Bear 100, Ty would be right up on the top of the list. Oh, yeah. He's sure. done it. Yeah. You know, he knows that particular race, not right. just something else. Same with David Roche. Same with Jeff Browning. Jeff yeah. Browning knows Western States really well. Maybe you want to do well there. Oh, yeah. You know, they'll know the Same little Ian intricacies. Yeah. Oh, Ian, yeah. Ian Sharman's another good one. Yep. So there's a lot of good coaches, really. Yeah. Um, it's just your fit. Maybe it even who can fit your budget, too. Yeah, that that does um, definitely play into it. Yeah, because I haven't been able to find a coach that I, you know, that fits my budget yet. Right. You know, which is like seven bucks a day mm-hmm. for you know three days. Seven bucks a day. But for three days, like I don't want a oh, twenty one. Oh, yeah. Twenty one dollars a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's so all that's like you know, that. That way I don't have to buy a lot. dollars a month. Yeah. That's what you're after. And and I'm looking. That's actually pretty close to. <laughs> well, but I'm I'm also I would <laughs> to like to what I try. But I'd like Charges. to. I would like to do a Groupon, so it's buy one get <laughs> oh one, gosh. right? So I think that's way. So it'd be like forty bucks a month is what gotcha. I'm looking at. You know, you know those Groupons. So mm. um, but, I think that you know you really need to um, try to go with somebody that has the experience in the ultra world. Yeah, like legit experience. Yeah. Yeah, not a yeah. one and done. Not you know, if you're looking for a hundred mile coach, maybe it's not somebody who's crushed 50 Ks and 50s. You know, right, you want exactly. a hundred mile experience yeah, yeah. or a success. Mm-hmm. And I, go with the coach that's humble. Yeah, that's really important. Yeah. So all the people we've named so far are people we recommend, and we know that they're good people. Yeah, I think that makes a big difference. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, because there are some coaches out there that have been maybe successful runners, but I just don't think that. You know, they have a good personality. Yeah. Right? Go with that that coach that, that's that's humble. They'll treat you better. Yeah. Treat you like, I don't know, like you're, you're, you're running with them. Yeah. Almost just having a good time with them. So, yeah, I think there's a lot of things to consider. But, again, mm-hmm. you know, hopefully that helps out a little bit. And we do know there's more coaches out there. Oh, Those yes. are just ones off the top of our head that mm-hmm. we have experience with. I mean, Joel. we can recommend. Yeah, Joel's tr- like had Ty coach him, yeah. so he's like first knowledge there. Yeah, exactly. And we we've talked to Jeff Browning on several occasions. Ian. I've I've talked to Jeff. I've had coffee with him, and we've talked coaching. And I wouldn't hesitate hiring him as a coach. Yeah. Oh, and a, a, another good thing while we're on that topic is Jeff. I'm just throwing that out there because it could be a mix of what you're doing. Jeff also is like does nutrition stuff. Yeah, he's spot on with that stuff. He, and he's a, he's a good coach, and yeah. so is Ty. Yeah. You know. Ty will have you like eating steak. Yeah. He's from Wyoming. You're gonna be eating yeah. steak, drinking milk, mm-hmm. everything. So. Yeah, but Jeff, you won't be having gluten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll be doing a lot of fun stuff. Yeah. Um, so I hope that helps, uh, Marty from River Falls, Wisconsin. Mm. Mm. Man, we have time to see Wisconsin and get cheese. Cheese. Can't get over that. So yeah, I think that's it for this week's show. Um, we'll be back next week. Um, I'll be back next week. We'll probably throw one together when I get back. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I plan on seeing some photos from San Diego. I'm really excited to go there. Um, everybody, enjoy your weekend as fall is still in full swing. It is. Hopefully for a couple more weeks. I hope so. I really do um, to get back out there and do it. But again, don't forget about our Beaverhead contest. Um, it's a great race. Um, go back and listen to the the rules on that. Go back and listen to the Gabe show. That mm-hmm. was a, we always have fun with Gabe. He's such just a good guy. Yeah, he is. Um, and it's a lot of fun. Um, don't forget about the Trail Running Film Festival coming to Ogden and Salt Lake and in your neck of the woods, too. You can check them out. That's Rain Shadow, Run, Rain Shadow Running for the Trail Running Film Festival. And the Nordic 7K. Oh, man, we want December to 15th. see you at the Nordic 7K. It's going to be fun. Mm-hmm. And there's 100 people that showed up last year that will, like, tell you that. Yeah, it was, like, so chill and low-key and but really fun. Lots of smiles, yeah. lots of giggles, all ages. Yeah. You know, we had all ages, all levels. You can walk the whole thing. You can bring, you know, younger folks, older yeah. folks. Um, but it's just a fun day, and we'd love to see you out there. That kind of helps Trail Matters podcast as well. Um, I think that's it for this week. So this is single track session number 111. This is Eric and Joel, and we are out. <laughs>